Howdy folks, welcome to my shop. You may recognize the famous or infamous Fiat 500 electric, which is perennially broken and on, uh, on the rack. Anyways, today we're working on the charger for a 2011 Nissan Leaf. We have the charger out of the Leaf and back at my shop. And I think I know what the problem is. Uh, so I put everything back together in the charger so that I could refilm everything for you guys. So let's get to it here and show you what I think the problem might be. My name's Kevin, I'm the owner of Austin EV Only. If you're new to the channel, we do repairs on all models of Tesla and the Chevy Volt, Fiat 500 electric, and the list is growing every day. If you're new here, we'd love it if you'd subscribe. It'd mean a lot to us and help others find our channel. Okay, so here's our charger. It is the 3NA3A. That's the charger. This is uh, series 2011. Um, and so I'll just go through the entire process here with you. Eight millimeter bolts all around. How many of those are there? Looks like 13 of these to be undone. Great. And then we're going to use a T30 bit, but these ones are special. These are the security bits. They have a little dot or groove in the center there. So that little notch is necessary. Uh, you probably have to special order this bit because they're not uh, common off the shelf. So, you know, hit up your Amazon and grab the special T30 bit. One here and one way down here. Great. Pull off the top here. Cool. Check out this board on top. Lots of diodes on here to fail. Double sided board so there are surface mounted parts on the back side and those can fail. Um, so let's go ahead and take this apart. So we'll obviously undo the clips here. This one I broke off. I don't know how to do it correctly, but either way, and actually this will come off more when the part comes out. This looks like two clips here. Not sure if that's the right way. Using my multimeter probe to push them back, but it works. Um, and then, lots of fun here. So, there's four screws that hold this board down. These ones came out with a bit of force, but got them to come out. So back off one and two. These ones totally stripped out. I mean, just 100% stripped out the second I tried to get them out. So guess what? Had to use my bolt extraction set. And I'll be honest, all the times that I've tried to use this set, it's never once worked for me. And I thought, you know, this is a cheap Harbor Freight piece of junk until today. Finally got it to work. So I used my smallest of, now I gotta find it, smallest of uh, bits here. And I'll be honest, this wasn't my first choice. I actually tried using the rubber band method. I don't know if you've seen that. It's where you jam a rubber band in here. start twisting and I tried and tried and made a hole in the rubber bands because I dogged off some pieces and so that didn't work so that's when I said you know what let's use the bolt extractor set so I drilled out with the smallest drill here and a hand drill and then used the smallest extractor here and it worked oh my god I couldn't believe it it really bit in there, and it just the key was to do it super slow to get it out. Let's see if we can. Okay, so I got my extractor. Here we go. And the key is to go so slow. And there she comes. Got it. There you go. And with that, now we've got a... a Oh, it's actually stuck on there. I can't even get it off. So I'm gonna have to use some pliers to get that off. Great, and now do the next one. Ooh, 
Cool. And we got that one as well. Okay, let's get the last two bolts out. Since those ones didn't, uh, the heads didn't mushroom out when I tried to remove them. All right, and I'm gonna lift it from the top side first because the bottom side, the tab I broke off, whoops, but this is still like, I can't even get it out. So let me lift from this side here. And pull it out, there we go. And there she is. So what you're not gonna see here is the, what could be, you know, tens of hours that I spent with a spotlight that I have here and a magnifying glass that I have here and going through and looking at each component visually. Now, granted, I'm an electrical engineer, or at least I have my electrical engineering degree, but uh, I'll say that in school, we practiced a lot of theory, but uh, didn't do a lot of practical application as far as testing motherboards. Uh, and in my brief stint working for a summit conductor company, we had engineering techs and engineers. So the techs got paid a whole lot less and seemed to me like they knew a whole lot more. So shout out to my engineering techs because they're the ones that actually know how to troubleshoot this. Um, I just looked. I looked at the components and said, does this look normal? Highly unscientific process, and in looking around, I didn't find anything wrong. Um, I searched various forums to see if, flip it over, and you can see there's a whole bunch of diodes and you know, resistors on this side as well. And certain folks were able to determine like, oh, you know, it's this, this one here, the D547. That's the one that always fails, or at least that's the one I saw in a video. Um, shout out to the folks in the video. Um, but, but I tested, you know, I got my multimeter out, I tested a number of these diodes, and I quickly gave up. I'm like, look, these diodes are testing good. I don't have, I, I can't possibly test all of them. There must be, God, what do I say? There, there must be over 200 components on this board. And then there's a whole nother board, so maybe another 200 components on, on the power board. So, like, how am I possibly gonna test all of these components? And I don't even have the tools to test. Like, you know, I can test a capacitor, a resistor, a diode. I can't test an IC, integrated circuit. Like, that's just not gonna happen. So, um, so again, just took hours and hours looking through it. And I gotta say, I did see something weird. What is this? What the, what is this nub here? Let's get a closer look. So look on the back side, smooth. On this side, smooth. On this side, smooth. What is this? What is this bulge here? Is that supposed to be there? I don't think so. I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna say that is a bad capacitor. And this is LE335. And then similarly, and again, I'm skipping a lot of the fun that I had here with you guys not watching. What's going on back here? What is that? Like, there's all this goop back in there. Is it supposed to be there? Is it not supposed to be there? What is all that? Like again, smooth on this side, smooth on this side, smooth on this side, and then this side's got all this, all this goop down there. That's supposed to be there? And this is a uh, LE-105, right there. So, I don't think all that goop is supposed to be back there behind it. So I'm gonna see about replacing this. And then next, before I start disconnecting like all these wires that go all around the edge, I made a quick little diagram. I can back up here. Just kind of where everything is placed on the board. So it's not pretty, but it works. Very scientific uh, diagram of all of the wires. So let's start pulling them out.
And I don't know why this caused me so much trouble, but the middle spacer, I forgot to take it out, and that was the last thing holding the board in. So I took all this stuff out, probably for nothing, and now the sucker just pulls away. Hooray! And there's the big heat sink. It goes there. So we can figure out how to get this heat sink off and then figure out how to get these parts out. Well, the unfortunate conclusion of this saga is I was not able to figure out how to get that heat sink off. I spent countless hours with my soldering iron and a not inexpensive solder sucker, and I could only desolder about half the pins. I also tried solder wick, which was completely worthless, and I just reached a point where the time investment did not make sense. I mean, I'm not gonna buy a $500 plus desoldering station. Um, that doesn't make sense, and I'm not gonna invest, you know, tens of, of hours into this when my labor rate just makes sense to buy a new one. So heat sink one, Austin EV only zero. Well, that's all for today, folks. If you found this video helpful, please smash that like button. And more importantly, please subscribe. That's how we make more videos. Until next time, this is Austin EV only.